All right, we have new developments in the Gilgo Beach case, DNA samples taken from the wife of the alleged Gilgo Beach serial killer, Rex Heuerman. Those samples match genetic material found on the remains of the victims. Now, we knew that Asa Ellerups, that's the wife's name, that her hair, ex-wife now, her hairs were found on the burlap that was wrapped around three women her husband allegedly murdered. But now we're learning that the DNA from those hairs on the burlap match Ellerup's DNA from her cheek swab. ASA, uh, ASA, Asa Ellerup was out of town, we're told, on the nights of the murders. Uh, we're told she didn't know anything about this. She divorced him right away. Uh, she is now uh, part of a million-dollar TV production deal based on the murders. Let's bring in former FBI agent and News Nation's Law and Justice contributor Jennifer Coffendaffer. The Coffendaffer left me a nice note on my door. Thank you very much. Good to see <laughs> you. Um, first, why was this important? And then segue into whether or not this means anything new for the wife. Well, it was important from the standpoint of it definitely confirms that those hairs that were found on the burlap that helped constrain three of these victims actually directly matched Ocelera. So confirmation, but really nothing uh, new. However, to me, what's interesting is the million dollar deal. And let me tell you why. We've already seen how that million dollars has changed Ocelera's actions. She's going to court now. She's visiting him. She will be called as a witness in this case. Will that million dollars affect her testimony? Mm. Um, affect her testimony? How would it affect her testimony? Well, I mean, look at how it's affected her actions. I mean, now she mm. has interaction with her husband, so, or former husband. So already yeah. it's affecting testimony, Chris. Anytime you have that million dollar price tag, you just wonder what could it change in terms of what she might say. I'll bet you lunch right now. She doesn't say she was part of it. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, I'm sure that, you know, this is this is going to be a way for her to make her life going forward, obviously, now uh, that the, the ex-husband's going to be out of the picture forever. But it does give a lot of comfort to the victim's families and that this is one less way to worry because, oh, sure, you got DNA on the burlap, but not on the bodies. So uh, you only have the burlap. You know, a defense counsel would use that. So uh, now it's a tighter circle. All right. Next uh, story. These allegations that we covered here uh, within the Mormon church, hundreds of women claiming that they were sexually abused uh, and have now come forward. There's a lawsuit. They're going at this former doctor, but they're also going at the church. Here's a taste of what we did already. She fed off of the Mormon community um, to recruit women to come be his patients where he could then continue to abuse. We're taught that we should be like Christ and do the right thing. And it really, really is hurtful when the people at the top don't practice what they preach. Um, let's bring back Jennifer Coffin Dever. So I learned after I did the segment that you had been working with some of these women and developing cases. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't know, but really I, I blame you for that. So what can you tell people about what you understand as the context of this? The biggest pushback I got wasn't that people didn't believe the women per se, but it was, what does this have to do with the church? Why aren't they just going after the doctor? Uh, what understanding do you have on that? Well, I was involved in interviewing uh, many of these women last summer uh, when I went to Utah on an assignment. And unfortunately, I saw some things that were very distressing in terms of what they said. And that was simply this. When these women were sexually molested, all of them at a very young age. Uh, they were all married to relatives either first, second, or third cousins, as were their parents. And the church and uh, what goes on there, they know about many of these interactions, and these women are hushed, and it's a generational thing. And I'm not saying certainly it's all Mormons. I am just telling you in this small town, in the interviews I conducted, that was the information I received. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. 
Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.